Good evening, cult members, and welcome to the Pop Culture Cult. This is Sean, and this is going to be our book. Yeah, it's always right. I said book review of Queen's Shadow. Now, this is going to be a, a book that is the first real time that we learn about, or at least have the story based around Padme Amidala. Now, we've had her show up in Clone Wars, and we had her show up in Thrawn Alliances with, as a secondary story. She was on a mission. It kind of went screwy. Uh, but this is the first time we actually get a story of her. The book itself deals with her time period from the election of a new queen into her being asked to be a new senator for Naboo, and then her time in the first year or so, maybe some change, of her time being a senator at, at, at on Coruscant. There's a ton of Easter eggs and, and canon material that puts a bow on some things that happened within the prequels, but specifically from Phantom Menace to Clone Wars. Uh, but really this story is about Padme and her relationship at, with her handmaidens. It is Padme learning how to not be queen anymore, how to really deal with the politics of the Galactic Empire, the Galactic Republic, and also her interaction with those around her and those people who have sworn fealty and sworn oaths of, of service to Padme. And it's I find it very interesting as a book. I, it, is there a lot of really good stuff in there for those who are deep in the canon of Star Wars? Absolutely. E.K. Johnson did Johnston did a really good job of integrating stuff that we knew and maybe filling some plot, hole, plot holes that we uh, had questions about and stuff like that. In the grand scheme of things, though, is this one of those books that I feel like you need, you absolutely have to read to understand canon, like let's say Rebel Rising or Catalyst or the Aftermath series and stuff like that? I don't think so. Uh, this is a book specifically made for those who have been cl clamoring for a Amidala book. Now, in this story, they do a really good job of distinguishing the difference between Amidala and Padme. And that's something that I feel like we really didn't get to see too much within the prequels themselves and in any other canon that we have had so far. And it's nice just to have this distinction between the two major parts of the character. And it's really fleshed out really well. And, and I, that part of the book I really did like. Her both learning how to not be Queen Amidala but also learning how to be Padme, the senator, and her also her private time with her handmaidens, who are her closest friends, those who have um, will take a bullet form and, and for her, and 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 one of them, several of them do. This is also a cool book to make uh, to give you an understanding of how she got to a point where she actually had feelings for Anakin, even though she knows it was it was against what she believed and what she thought the Jedi should believe. And there's a couple different times where they talked about within the book uh, about her handmaiden saying that maybe you should allow somebody to be in your life. And, and she wanted a family, and she went home at one point in time and spent time with her mom and dad and her sister and her niece and how she talked about how she wanted to have a family and stuff like that. However, the book at times it can be very uh, rushed to get to the next important canon piece, specifically in the second half. There's some storylines with Sabe uh, that... Uh, towards the end 
and we have to put this in and have it be finished. And, and, and I feel like if the book was maybe another 100 pages longer. Now, I listened to the audio book. It was an eight-hour listen, and I read it. I listened, listened to it in uh, that time and a half. So I got it done within a six-hour time period. And I feel like as is... I feel like there could have been more towards the end that actually would have helped wrap everything up. If you're looking for lightsabers, if you're looking for space battles, if you're looking for that kind of stuff, you're just not going to get in this book. This book is a uh, it is a coming of age story of a young woman, and it is a young adult book. But uh, some of my favorite books have been the young adult books. So the Leia Princess of Alderaan book is really is one of my favorites. Uh, Lost Stars also is a young young adult book that I was probably my favorite one uh if you were wanting a story about padme you should read this book if you are looking for um super fun canon uh story arcs and references to both clone wars the tv series the animated tv series and how we kind of get to the first part of the Clone Wars movie, you'll like this book. Uh, there's there's a lot of fun stuff in here, but like I said, I don't feel like it's a have to read for Star Wars canon. And uh, as much as I, I I've been struggling with this all afternoon, and I just talked to Josh uh, for the Rebel Files f- filming, and I just feel like I, as much as I liked it, I I just this is not one I'm going to go back on and and think about how it's important to the overall story of Star Wars, and that's fine. It's a standalone episode within a giant story, and that's fine. It's just not maybe for everyone. So that's my thoughts on Star Wars Queen's Shadow, the book about Padme Amidala. What did you guys think? Have you read it? Are you looking forward to reading it? Let us know. Please like this video. Leave us a comment on your thoughts on the book. If you're excited about it, are you excited about any of the other books that are coming up in the future? And please subscribe to the channel while you're here. Also help us out on Patreon. And until next time, I'm one with the Force, and the Force is with me.